We begin today's shiur at the second of the wide lines on the Kuf Yud Gimel. If you prefer, 12 lines from the bottom at the end of the line. You'll notice the word Omar. But before we begin the Gemara, we have some uh, topic headings and structural notes to deal with. The Nosei Mivne that you see to the side of the Gemara, the Nosei is the topic. Mivne represents the structural note. A bow tie shape will appear. And if you glance at the Gemara, you'll notice that there is also a numbering one and two, three lines from the bottom. There's a bow tie number two. These represent Shnei Lushonos Hafuchos, two opposite versions, Shel Shmuel, Be'inyin Habo Al Eishes Cheresh, a woman married to a Cheresh. So a, an outsider, some other man, comes and has inter, um, intimacy with her. Would one be guilt, uh, uh, expected to bring a suspended guilt offering? Naturally, a man that has relations with a regular married woman, of course, unintentionally, he brings a korban chatos, a sin offering. This is a different kind of offering, an osham tolui, this is a situation where there is, generally speaking, an Oshem Tolui is brought when there is an element of doubt concerning that type of offense when, if there were no doubt, the sacrifice that would need to be brought is a Korban Chatos. An Oshem Tolui, therefore, is brought when the circumstances are doubtful. That's in general terms, and we'll see how it's applied here. Let us now uh, take note also of another uh, marking. Uh, you'll notice we have a uh, a trapezoid type shape or a volcano shape, and you'll also notice that it appears in alternating directions. The uh, situ- the marking scheme that that reflects is a type of back and forth structure. Uh, We'll make, uh, we'll uh, we'll come back to make note of that a bit later. So let's first open up uh, with the Gemara. Omar Rav Chia Bar Ashi Omar Shmuel Eishes Cheresh Ein Chayovin Oleo Osham Tolui The wife of a deaf mute if some other man has intimacy with her it will not result in the bringing of a sacrifice known as the Oshom Toloi. Would you what what would you have thought otherwise? So let's take a look at Rashi uh, that you'll find on the fourth wide line. Ein chayavim ole Oshom Toloi. The name all that one should think Safek Ashes Ishi that there is an element of doubt that she is considered a married woman. Sofek hoya boy da sofek ain boy. Did he have intention when marrying her or did he not have intention? If that was the case, then one who had intimacy with her, an outsider, would be obligated to bring the Oshem Tolui. Devadai, why is there no need for Oshem Tolui? Devadai ain lo shum kinyin minatora. Because it is with certainty that we say that he has no ability to acquire. Being that that's the case, since the deaf mute does, has no ability to acquire, the woman to whom he's married is not considered a wife, a wife insofar as being obligated to bring a sacrificial offering when intimacy was done uh, without intent. Now, that having been said, Shmuel made his point that the Gemara now suggests a, there's a question, you'll notice it lasts a number of lines. Can we bring support to Shmuel? Now, we should also note on the side of our Gemara, you'll notice the house shape that appears. Mokur shuhu kenisayon lesayea. 
the source that we bring in now is the source brought in as an attempt to support. Later, when we enter the second Lashon of Shmuel, you'll notice the same marking but inverted. And we've noted, Later, this will be brought as a refutation on Shmuel. The, the, we have a continued note on the side, uh, we call a tatnose mivne, a subtopic with a st- specific structural uh, characteristic. Hagemora mevareres. The Gemara will start to analyze Lefi Alishna Kama according to the first version. Hadam Shmuel Habalishes Cheresh Enu Chayav Hashem Talui. Haim Efsher Lesayo Mimokor Behilchus Truma. She Trumas Cheresh Enu Truma. We're going to try to bring support to him, and that's what the volcano shape indicates. The the attempt to bring support to him. Uh, from laws concerning truma, she trumas cheresh eno truma. If a true, if a cheresh, a deaf mute, tithes, the separation that he does is of no meaning. Ukemo ishein truma so truma klal, and just like we say that his truma is not considered truma at all. So too, the deaf mute, when it comes to his uh, uh, marrying a woman, <coughs> so from a Torah standpoint, nothing takes hold. The fee dechias hagemara. Later, the gemara will reject that, and according to the rejection. Namely, rejecting this attempt to support Shmuel from the laws of Truma, the, you will see the inverted ha- uh, volcano shape. Shmuel Soiver Karebi Eliezer. Sh- Shmuel, with regard to Truma, happens to hold like Rebbe Lozer, the Truma's Cheresh equals Suffolk. That a deaf mute who tithes, who sets aside the truma tithe, that has the status of something doubtful. Now, that's a key word. When you see something doubtful, you then begin to wonder why then, with regard to the Aishas <coughs> Cheresh, did we say that there was no element of doubt, hence no need for an Osham Toloi? We need to explain that now. The Ha Diyarma Shmuel the Inyan Eishes Cheresh De Nechayev Osham Tolui that which Shmuel said regarding some other man that has intimacy with the wife of a deaf mute he is not obligated in an Osham Tolui HaKavona the explanation is the intent is Shebemes he Sofik really his marriage to her is an issue of doubt not like we said earlier that it's clear that he has no Kenyan whatsoever quite to the contrary there's an element of doubt as far as why is there no Osham Tolui? After all, we explained earlier that Osham Tolui is brought when there is an element of doubt. The Ein Kan Chaticho Mishnei Chatichos. This is a principle that's actually controversial. There's a machloikis about this. In order to bring an Osham Tolui, is it enough that a person encountered a doubt? Or in addition to the element of doubt it had to be a situation where there were one of two pieces there and it wasn't clear which one the person had violated this would be a case if there were let us say two pieces of meat for example one was chalev and one was not one was definitely chalev and one was definitely not chalev chalev is that type of or that portion or section of an animal that's forbidden, and one who would eat that inadvertently would be chayav a korban chatos. But if there's an element of doubt, namely there were two pieces, one was chalev and one was not chalev, and he doesn't know which one he ate, then he would bring an osham toloi. However, if there was simply one piece, and it wasn't clear whether it was chalev or something kosher, 
there would be no Asham Toli. As we just presented things, we uh, are not then denying that there's an element of doubt here, <coughs> but it's not enough grounds because you didn't have two pieces, two entities, two elements. In this case, it would be two women uh, based upon which I would have enough reason for bringing the Asham Toloi. Now, let us continue in the Gemara. After having gone through the uh, the whole give and take in the Gemara, we are going back to now raising the question of can we say that the issue of Truma tithing is the Tanaic source concerning the tithing of Truma on the by, by done by an Cheresh uh, will support Shmuel. Now, what does the source say? So we reread Lema Masayale Chamisha Lo Yisraimu Vim Tormu Ein Truma. There are five kinds of people that should not tithe, and if they tithed, their tithe is not going to be considered a tithe, a Truma tithe. Vieluhain. The following are listed. The first one is the one that is of primary importance to us. The rest is not uh, important for us to dwell on right now. Number one, Cheresh, a deaf mute. Shaita, an imbecile. Three, Koton, a minor. Fatorim es Shalo, someone who goes over to someone else's untithed produce without the permission of the owner, and he separates the tithe. Or an idol worshipper that tithes Jewish owned produce even with the instruction of the owner. Ain Trumaso Truma. These tithes, these people tithing would not result in an actual effective tithe. So what do we see? Let's focus on Cherish. We say a Cherish, if he tithes, Ain Trumaso Truma. His act is meaningless and likewise the act of marrying a woman done by a deaf mute would be meaningless she's not considered halachically a married woman therefore if an outsider had intimacy with her it would not result in the bringing of an osham tolui the Gemara says no this source cannot support Shmuel because Shmuel when it comes to the issue of truma you will see he holds like Rabbi Elazar. Who, Shmuel, do you mark Rabbi Elazar? Desanya, Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Yitzchok, Omer Mishum, Rabbi Elazar, Trumas Cheresh, Lotetse, Lechulin, Mitneshu, Safek. Rabbi Yitzchok, in quoting Rabbi Elazar, says that a, a deaf mute that tithed, so it is, uh, it's ineffective in. Uh, the uh, in in uh, let's say uh, uh, e- exempting the rest of the produce as being now hulin because what the cheresh does is considered suffolk it's considered doubtful the uh, the gemara asks e svira kerebelozar if shmuel holds like rebelozar that the actions of a cheresh fall in the category of doubt then Asham Tomei Nami Lechayev. So the intimacy with the Cheresh's wife should result in the bringing of an Asham Tolui. After all, the Asham Tolui is a sacrifice brought when there is an element of doubt. The Gemara responds, Bo'inon Chaticha Mishte Chatichos. In order for someone to be actually Chayev, to be obligated in bringing an Asham Tolui, the nature of the doubt has to concern two entities or two elements or two pieces and having intimacy with the wife of the Cheresh doesn't conform to that construction that would result in the bringing of an Asham Tolui the Gemara asks Umi boy Rebbe Lozer Chaticho Mishte Chatichos is that really so that the Tano Rebbe Lozer has that requirement the Hotanya Rebbe Lozer Omer Koi chayovin al chelboy osham tolui. The koi is a is a creature whose status is not clear. It's either a it's a suffik chaya suffik behema. Behema is a domesticated variety, kosher variety animal, and a chaya is an undomesticated kosher variety animal. Let us point out uh, 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 concerning chelev 
the Torah prohibits the chilev of behemos, of domesticated animals. The Torah does not prohibit the chilev of an undomesticated, of a wild animal. What is a koi? So Rebbe Lazar says a koi is an, it falls into that doubtful area, and as a result, one, if one would eat the chilev, that, those parts of the animal that are considered chilev, but they taken extracted from a koi, the koi creature, he would bring an osham tolui, because of, there's an, because of the doubt. But you don't have here two pieces, you don't have uh, you just have the koi. That's a this a that single animal creates enough doubt to warrant bringing the asham toloi. So to suggest that Shmuel holds like Rebbe Lazar, why then does Shmuel say that in the case of Ashes Cherish, when you just finished telling us that a Cherish represents doubt, does he have Kenyan in mind or not? Why then is there an exemption of asham toloi, especially if Shmuel holds like Rebbe Lazar? The Gemara answers, Shmuel sovar karebelozer bechado upolig olei bechado. Shmuel doesn't accept all opinions of Rebelozer wherever they appear. Shmuel holds like Rebelozer regarding the ability of a cherish to conclude a deal, calling it a suffix, an element of doubt. But he disagrees with Rebbe Lozer regarding the requirements necessary for the bringing of an Asham Toli. Whereas Rebbe Lozer says an Asham Toli is brought as soon as there is an element of doubt, Shmuel says no. The mere doubt is not enough, but rather you have to have two pieces. One definitely Chayev, and the other definitely Potter, and the offender is not sure which one he consumed. The permitted one, the permitted piece, or the forbidden piece. And therefore, in the case of the Aishas Cherish, you don't have two pieces, and therefore, no Asham Toloi. Ve'ika Amri, Omar Abchiyo Barashi, Omar Shmuel, notice the stark contrast with the first Lashon, la- the first version. Here, Shmuel says, Aishas Cherish, Chay Yovin Oleo Asham Toloi. That one who has intimacy with the wife of a deaf mute, he will have to bring an Asham to a suspended guilt offering. Meisve, why should one be chayev an Asham Toli? Chamisha lo Yisraimu, etc. And in that source, here the Gemara is uh, saving ink, but it's a reference to the source above. We saw there that the truma of a cheresh. Ain truma so truma. It's nothing. So that the woman married to a cheresh, she should not be considered, halachically speaking, married, a married woman. Hence, there should be no sacrifice obligation if an outsider has intimacy with her. The Gemara answers, Sovar law, Karebbe Lazar. Shmuel says the reason that you bring an Asham Tolui is because that would be Rebbe Lazar's approach. Well, what is Rebbe Lozer's approach? First of all, we saw Rebbe Lozer say that the truma of a cheresh is considered suffix. And as far as chaticho mishtei chaticho, Rebbe Lozer doesn't require that. And Shmuel holds like Rebbe Lozer, lock, stock, and barrel. Hence, a, an ashes cheresh would result in the chiv of bringing an osham toli. Because of the, the element of doubt that's present, does a cheresh have enough let's say, intent to create a kinyan, a bonding, a deal, uh, and in this case, a marriage. The Gemara continues, Bo Rabbi Rav Ashi, my time the Rebbe Lozer. The topic heading that we have, you'll notice on the side of the Gemara, Notice where we've written no say, and we indicate shuro sheni mehasof. Uh, the no say concerning the second to last line of Gemara. That's where we're holding right now. So we've written in that introductory remark or title of sugya biru shitas rebbe lozer cheresh. We're going to be analyzing the opinion of rebbe lozer, who says that a uh, an ashes cheresh, according to what we've just explained that a Lafi Rebbe Lozer, the wife of a Cheresh, one who has intimacy with her, that would 
result in a guilt offering, a suspended guilt offering, the offender would have to bring an asham toloi. Let us, again, I know that we might sound re- repetitious at times, but the offender here was not aware that she was a, uh, a, a married woman. Because if he did so with awareness, if he did so uh, with intentional, uh, with intention to violate uh, or with awareness of the problem, then there's no sacrifice that's brought. But what we have to analyze is the uh, the root of the suffix regarding the Aishas Cheresh. She's not considered a definite wife. If she was a definite wife, then someone who had unintentionally had inter, inter, uh, intimacy with her, he would bring a korban chatos. But we don't have uh, the Aishas Cheresh being considered a definite wife, but rather a suffix. And as we said, we want to analyze this suffix. There are going to be terms that appear in the Gemara. We'll be able to understand them much better by learning the Rashi along with the Gemara. But just by way of introduction, the two possibilities are Aleph, Chada, Daita. The Cheresh has, is, is a, he's a deaf mute, and his mindset, his intention is considered uh, consistent one consistent mindset and we'll appreciate that more as we said before when we get into the Gemara and the Rashi but there's another possibility Shnei Daita he has two mindsets he simply he has a uh, we'll call it a swinging psychological state Sometimes he's itim cholim. Cholim means healthy. Sometimes he's he's purely lucid in thought. Itim shaitan. Sometimes he is imbecilic. He's uh, inept. He's uh, irresponsible. He's considered like a shaita, like a fool. So he has these, we call this psychological or mental swings. So once again, chadadaito would mean one uniform type of psychological state or mental state and Shnei Daita would represent this swing state now the Gemara so Rav Bo Ravashi my time Rav Lozer Ravashi asks what is the basis of Rav Lozer that says that the Eishas Cheresh will generate the Chiyuv Osham Toloi and the analysis do we say Mifshad Pshito Le the Cheresh Daita Klishto Hu that it's clear to Rebbe Lazar that the me- mental capacity of a cheresh is called daito klishta. Klishta means weak, literally thin or weak. That's that's clear to Rebbe Lazar. What is the element of doubt? The Gemara will go on to explain that momentarily. We'll just read a few more words of Gemara and then we'll look at the Rashi. Is it clear to Rebbe Lazar that he has one uniform uh, mind set or uh, me- mental state? He calls it Daito Klishtahu. Omiu Misafkole e Daito Tsilusa e Lav Daito Tsilusa Ula Oilom Chada Daito. Here we've used a triangle to emphasize these two possibilities of Chada Daita versus something else, versus the two states of mind. Oidilma, Rashi, the Gemara goes on, or possibly, Pshita Lei, the Daita, the Daita Klishta, the Lav Daita Tzlusahu. Or is it clear to uh, Rebel Lazar that he has a weak mentality and it is not with any degree of tzilusa, with of clarity the, so that if that's clear that he has a weak unclear mindset the hachainu taimo and here with regard to the ashes cheresh, the following is the reason is the reason that there is doubt 
Kevan the itim cholim, the itim shoite, because he has mind swings. Sometimes he is completely normal, and it could be at that point in time he married the woman, making him a full fledged wife, uh, making her a full fledged wife of the cheresh. The itim shoite, and sometimes he has that, he, and sometimes he swings to. Uh, imbecilic behavior and it might be at that point that he had married the woman making her non a non wife in my estimation this Gomorrah without Rashi it will s- remains a bit uh, unclear or abstract let's try to gain greater clarity by going through the Rashi Rashi we're looking at is second line from the bottom. My time to Rebelozer Beishas Cherish. What's the reason behind Rebelozer regarding the Eishas Cherish concerning whom he said there would be an obligation to bring him Oshan Tolui if some other man had intimacy with her, the wife of the deaf mute. Klishta, Daka. The word Klishta means something thin. Klomar Daito, Muetes. Shein mechudet lahavin kshar b'neiram. He's not of sharpness of mind like other people. Umiu misafkole idaito tzilusa he oisik sastas sheeshlo. The little, uh, the little awareness that he has is it with clarity. Im tzilulahi uvame shehu noisein daito ve oisik davar vaday kavanosu kavona. In a case like that when he was, as they say, he puts his mind to it. So his intention is considered true intent. That's one pos- That's the one side of the doubt. E lav daito tzula, or possibly his, he doesn't have clarity of thought. But as far as what is uh, what is unknown uh, to Rebel Lazar is that the Cheresh has a consistent, uniform state of mind, state of mental capacity. The Eino Itim Cholim Itim Shaita. He is not sometimes totally normal and sometimes totally imbecilic. So once again, according to this side, according to this side of the analysis, the, uh, the Tana Rebbe Lazar uh, is, um, is of the opinion that the Cheresh has a weak mindset. However, what's not clear to Rebbe Lazar, according to this side of the analysis, why would it be called suffake? Because the little, uh, the little mental capacity that he has, when he puts his mind to concentrating on whatever he's doing, he has clarity, or possibly not. That's all the analysis of one side of the possibilities. Oy Dilma, Rashi continues... Pshita lay, it's clear to the Tana Rebelozer, the lav daito tzilusahi, that he doesn't have clarity of thought. Elohainu taimo de mesafkale, rather, this is the reason that Rebelozer has an element of doubt concerning the cheresh, the itim shu cholim legamri, the daito tzlula. He has, he has a, we'll call mental swings. Sometimes he's completely, uh, Normal, with a total clarity of thought. The Chayshin and Shema B'Shas Kiddush and Cholim Hoya were suspect that maybe it was at that time that he he concluded he uh, uh, established a marriage with his wife. So now we turn back to the Gemara on the fourth line from the top. Lamai Nafkamina. What? difference does it make in how we analyze the Cheresh as having one uniform mindset or but a one uniform but weak mental capacity or uh, an individual has total swings from totally normal to imbecilic the Mainaf Gamina what practical difference does this have the Hoytzi Ishto Beget for 
him to be able to divorce his wife with a divorce document. I amris chado daitahu. If you say he has one uniform mindset, mental state, then no problem. Kikidushin kach gerushin. Whatever mental state, whatever. Uh, whatever he was at the time he had married her, so too he is at the time he is divorcing her. So the divorce would be able to undo the marriage, the marriage being done on the, on the same level as the divorce, because he doesn't have uh, swings in mental capacity. The Amrasitim Cholavitim Shoita, however, if you say that he can swing from totally normal to being imbecilic, Kedushi Motsi Mekadesh, he can, in effect, marry a woman. Gerushi Lo Motsi Megarish. However, he won't be able to divorce her because we are, we're suspicious that when the marriage took place, he was of totally sound mind. And when he comes to divorcing her, he is, he is at that point a Shoita. And a Shoita is an, is, is an inept. Uh, unqualified individual to uh, to uh, inst- to render a get. So that is a to- a full presentation of Rebel Ozer, and we don't. And with Gemara ends off. Teku, we don't know. We don't know uh, re- when uh, uh, Rebel Ozer uh, deals with the Cherish. Is it a function of the Cherish having one uniform das throughout his life? Or does he go through a mental swing from one state to another? Nishtatis lo yotzi. The Mishnah had taught us that if a woman had uh, become an imbecile, had become imbecilic, so she is not to be divorced. Now on the side of the Gemara, we have a uh, no say a topic heading and we've written there Din Shel Rabbi Yitzchak that uh, the, the teaching of the law of Rabbi Yitzchak Ha Dekotani Nishtatis Lo Yotze that which the Mishnah taught that a woman who becomes a Shoita she cannot be divorced Hainu Midurabonan that is true on a rabbinic level Avol Mina Torah Shoita Miskareshes but from a purely Torah standpoint the Shoita could be divorced the Gemara Omer of Yitzchak Devar Torah Shoita Miskareshes from a Torah standpoint the imbecilic woman can be divorced Midi Dehave Apikris Baal Korcha no different than a woman of sound mind a normal woman being divorced against her will and we know that even though she doesn't want to be divorced. She lacks intent to be divorced. She is nevertheless able to be divorced. So too, the shaita, she lacks intent by her very nature. She also can be divorced. Why do the rabbis intervene and say she cannot be divorced? Answer So that uh, people, uh, uh, men would not uh, uh, behave in an immoral fashion with her, with this unwedded, uh, imbecilic female. As long as she has a husband, so he watches over her. Other men aren't going to start up with her. But once she would be released, she is prey for the... the, uh, uh, immoral members of the population. As you can see, the Gemara proceeds with a long question, and you'll see the double underlining marking, which is one of our series markings. And on the side under the Mivnet, we in- feature the double underline and indicate Gimel Shlovim. There are three stages: Levara Hechi Domi Hadir Yitzchok. The the circumstances concerning which Reb Yitzchok said his law. So we continue. Hey, Chidomi. Regarding this shoita that he said can be divorced on a Torah level, but on a rabbinic level, no. She 
is a woman, though she's not totally normal, but nevertheless she has the capacity of watching her get, when she receives the divorce document, <coughs> she knows how to keep it in, in safekeeping, and she knows, uh, she has enough sense to uh, watch herself, to keep herself away from trouble. If it's a woman like that, who would who would start up with her and deal with her immorally? So that's not the type of woman that Rabbi Yitzchok was describing in his halacha. Ella, the ein yodas lishmor lo gita v'lo atzma. You want to say that Rabbi Yitzchok was dealing with a kind of woman that has wouldn't be able to watch her get, and she can't keep her, she can't watch herself either. Then why would Rabbi Yitzchok say devar Torah shoyta misgareshes? Why would he say that from a Torah standpoint she can she is able to be divorced? Omar Debe was it not said in the Yeshiva Rabbianai? The Posuk in Sefer Dvorim says Vinosan Biyada, the Posuk dealing with divorce says Vinosan Biyada, you put in her hands the get the divorce document, and we understand that to mean Mishiyesh Lo Yad Legare Shatsma, someone who has the capacity, literally the, the hand for receiving a get. To the exclusion, Yotzezuzu Shein Lo Yad Legare Shatsma, to the exclusion of a woman who has absolutely no control not only over her get but over herself she doesn't know how to watch anything the Tana Debe Rabbi Yishmael and in the Yeshiva Rabbi Yishmael they feature the following Tanaic source Vishalchami Beiso once again the Posit dealing with divorce she receives the get and she is sent away from his house what kind of woman is described in the Posuk? Mishemeshalchavienachoser is a type of woman that when you send her away, she doesn't come bouncing right back. Yotzazu, to the exclusion of the Shoita, Shemeshalchavachoseris, a woman that is an imbecile, you'd send her away, she'd come bouncing right back home. Uh, the, as uh, Rashi says, Shekein Minigal Shoitim Shein Boishin, a Shoita, an imbecile, well, it doesn't even experience any sense of embarrassment. A, a, in contrast to a normal woman, when you when she's a, when she's a th- divorced, if we can use harsh terms, she's thrown out of the house. She experiences a great deal of embarrassment. She she wouldn't come right back. So it's only that kind of woman that lends herself to being divorced. So what is the kind of woman that Rabbi Yitzchok is? dealing with in his law. Lo Tzricha, what is what he is dealing with is the Yidas Lishmor Gita Yidas Lishmor Atzma. She knows how to keep uh, guard, take care of things that she is given. But uh, regarding herself, she doesn't know how to uh, avoid being the subject of immorality. Therefore, Dvar Torah Shoyta Mizgareshes from a Torah standpoint, she has enough qualifications for the Torah to recognize her being divorced. She knows how to watch over her divorce document. The Omur Rabbonon, however, the Rabbonon say, Lo Lifka, don't send her out. So that the uh, men folk in the general population do not deal with her immorally. Omar Abai Daikonami uh, Abai points out that through careful reading we can see this point, this distinction between the, that the woman we're talking about is the way we describe that there's one, we'll say the, the Torah level uh, way of dealing with her and the rabbinic way. The Kotoni Gabi Dida in the Mishnah it says when speaking from the woman's standpoint it says Nishtates Lo Yotzi if she became a uh, an imbecile so the man is not to divorce her the Gabi Dide and when the focus uh, of attention of attention is on him it says regarding the man Lo Yotzi Oilomis. He shall never send her away. 
Why? When it refers to the man, to the husband, does it say, He shall never send her away. And when describing the woman, it says that if she became, if she became a fool, it doesn't use the word oilomis. Eloshmamino, the uh, from here we see that the that uh, the the Mishnah is supporting Rav Yitzchak's approach. Ha on the Torah level, we have that which it, that which uh, it says that she uh, can be sent that she can't be sent away. But and ha the rabbonon, if we um, the uh, as we say the distinction in terminology reflects one on a doraisa level and the other on a rabbinic level. As we continue in the Gemara, we glance at the side. We have a no say where we've written hesper hamasu maton an explanation of the give and take bein reb yochanan ben nuri v'chachomim. This is this goes back to the Mishnah of Kufyud Beis Omid Beis, the discussion between Rabbi Yochanan Ben Nuri and the Chachom and Beinyan Pikeach and Pikachas Shenisharish or Nisharsha. So in the Mishnah we saw Rabbi Yochanan Ben Nuri asking, uh, if you have the Mishnah in front of you, you'll notice it's the third wide line where Rabbi Yochanan Ben Nuri asks, Mitnei Ma Ho Isha Shenisharsha. Why the difference between man and woman, a woman who became a deaf mute, she can be divorced, whereas a man who became a deaf mute cannot initiate a divorce? The Rabbonin answered, You can't compare a man who is divorcing to the woman who was being divorced. A woman can be divorced whether it's with her acceptance, her willingness, or even against her will. Whereas a, whereas a man can divorce, can initiate a divorce only if it's his will. And then, Heyid Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudgeda al Hareshes Shesiyavya. Shiyotza beget. Rabbi Yochanan Gudgera told us, tells us about a deaf mute that was married off by her father when she was a minor, and the father had accepted the kedushin on her behalf. That's a full-fledged marriage, and the testimony was Shiyotza beget. She can be divorced with a divorce document. Omru lo, the Chachomim said, Af zu kayotzebo, the pikachas shen is the same, that she can be divorced. And not only that, but she can be divorced even though she doesn't have a rutzon, a willingness for that. So now we turn to our Gemara. Omru Rabbi Yochum ben Nuri v'chule, Ibai Eloho, the Gemara asks, Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, Ish Pshito Levi Ishro Kamed Bayale, is as the halacha regarding the man something that is obvious to Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri that he knows about the man, namely that a Ish Shenis Harish cannot uh, initiate a divorce, and he's asking that uh, granted that that's the case. Why is there a difference between him, which I understand, for Isha come by a lane? He's asking about the woman. Oy Dilma, Isha Pshitole, or it is obvious to Rabbi Yochum and Nuri what the law is regarding the woman, that she can always be divorced. For Isha come by a lane. He was asking about the man. Why is it that the man cannot always initiate a divorce, even if he's a Cheresh? So the question, once again, is what point in Rabbi Yochan ben Nuri's approach to things, or in his mindset, which is the known and which is the unknown? Ta Shema. So the Gemara responds, answers, Midaka Amru Lei, 
from the way that the Rabbonon responded to Rabbi Yochum Minuri in the Mishnah, we can see what Rabbi Yochum Minuri was aware of. So, from the fact that they said, "Eino doyme ha'ish hamegarish le'isho hamizgarishes," you can't compare the issue of the man to the issue of the woman. Shoisho yotzis l'ritzayin of shalitzona. A woman can be divorced with uh, with uh, her approval and even without her approval. Voish eino motzi elul ritzono. A man cannot divorce unless he himself has a desire to do so. Shma mina, from the structure we can see, ish komebayale, the issue concerning the man was what was troubling Rabbi Yochanan Benuri. In other words, knowing that the woman under all circumstances can be divorced, he was asking why is it that the man can't operate under all circumstances as well? The Gemara responds to that and says, Adarapa, to the contrary. lo from the fact that later in the Mishnah we saw the Rabbonon saying to Rabbi Yochanan Benuri, Af zu ba. Oh, this, namely the case of the Pichistian Isharsha, is like the case that was featured by Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudgeda. Namely, that a woman can be divorced even against her will. So, from the fact that they, that that's how they responded to him and said, Afzu Kayotzebo, oh, so too the Pikhis Shinis Harsh is like that, Shmamino, that was his point of question, Isha Kome that it was the issue of the woman that he wasn't sure of. So, which way are we to go with regard to Rabbi Yochan Menuri? Which point was clear to him, and which point was the point of investigation, of question? Ella, new approach. Rabbi Yochan Menuri lidivrayem ka'omer luhu. Rabbi Yochan Menuri was addressing the Rabbonon on their terms. Now, we should just note that the Tanakama in the Mishnah on the Afkufyud base says that a pikeach shenosa pikchis a normal person that married a normal woman im nisharsho yocho lahotzi lahotziof he if she became a deaf mute he can divorce her im nisharish hu if he became a deaf mute eno yocho lahotzi so he cannot divorce her so the with that in mind Rabbi Yochum Anu is speaking to the Rabbonon on their terms. Lididi, as far as I am concerned, ki hechi di ishlo motzi megaresh ishonami lo migrisho. Just like a man who became an imbecile cannot initiate a divorce, a woman who had become an imbecile cannot be divorced. Ela lidid hu, but according to you, my shno isha u my shno ish. What is the basis of making a distinction between a woman that became a deaf mute that she can be divorced versus a man that became a deaf mute cannot initiate a divorce. Omru le, they said to Rabbi Yochmenuri, Eino doime ha'ish hamagaresh le'isha hamizgareshes. You can't compare them. A man to the woman. The woman can be divorced even against her will as you find even in the case of normal women. A man, on the other hand, has to have sound mind in order to initiate a divorce. Heyid Rabbi Yochanan and Gudgido, we recently just uh, made reference to that in the Mishnah, he spoke about a, a Ktano that was a deaf mute that was married off by her father. Omar Ravva may a do so show Rabbi Yochanan and Gudgido from his testimony that a uh, concerning the Haratius, the minor deaf mute that was married by her father, that she is divorced, she can be divorced through a divorce document. So, from this testimony of his, uh, now we should point out Rashi, he adds a little twist to this. Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudgil said that even when the original Kiddushin was a full-fledged 
bonding, marital bond. Lo bo'inon da'ita di'isha begerishin. We don't require that woman's uh, awareness uh, and certainly consent when it comes to the divorce. So now, with that in mind, that the woman can be divorced even without her das, without her approval, without her intent to be divorced, the following will apply. Omar li edim. A husband says to two witnesses, Ru, get ze shani noisein. Take note of this divorce document that I am about to give. And the woman, the lady, the wife doesn't hear this. So his statement to the Adam is made, we'll say, behind her back. Note this divorce document that I'm going to be giving. The Omar law, and then he turns to the woman and says to his wife and says, Kinsi Take behold, take this bill of debt. Harezu Megureshis. The result of that would be her being divorced. Now, was she aware that she was receiving a divorce document? No. Does that matter? No. Me, lo, Omar, Rabbi Yochaman, Gudguda. Is it not so that he said, lo bo'inon daita, that we don't require her awareness? Hacha, nami, lo bo'inon daita. So too, in the case we just featured, her das is not required. The Gemara asks on what we just, what Rava said, Pshita. What Rava is pointing out is quite obvious that uh, that's what would be the halacha according to Rabbi Yochanan ben Gudgada. So what do I need Rava for? The Gemara answers, and this answer takes a couple lines to develop. Mahu de Tema I would have thought me the Omar law kinsi star from the fact that when giving the get to the woman to his wife he says take this bill of collection betule batle that that is tantamount to his annulling the get his canceling his voiding of the get. Komash Malon, what Rava is telling us is the following. Isa de Batle, if his real intention was to mavatel the get, to, uh, to annullify it, li aidim have komalo, he would have told this to the witnesses. Umidolo omar li aidim, from the fact that he did not spell this out to the witnesses, lo batle velo midi. He wasn't voiding it at all. To hide the komar hachi, the fact and that which he spoke thusly to the woman, take this bill of divorce, uh, take this uh, bill of debt. Machmas kisufo de law. He was embarrassed. Kisufo means he was embarrassed. He was embarrassed to tell her, take your divorce document. So, uh, without Rava, I would have thought, as the Gemara just said, that he in fact, by saying kinsi shtar said that he was avoid, he was nullifying the get. Rava then comes to tell me that's not so, it's not a nullification, but the get remains a get, and that he that he said to the woman to his wife, he said that out of mere embarrassment.